You may be seated. Let me to my Shia. Let me um let me digress and give on it. Give me a little more monitors. Let me give on it where honor is due and then move forward because some of y'all like me have church in the morning and I got to be at the airport at five and we losing an hour. You that didn't know it, I just prophesied to you so you're not late. But we're going to lose an hour. We spring forward. So don't do too much hanging out after all this. I heard that my colleague and brother, Bishop William Hudson, was here. Now, it's going to be this quiet for about five minutes. So if y'all going to be friendly, I want y'all to talk to me while I'm testifying. Especially my pastors. I don't want y'all catching their disorder, all right? I want y'all talking to me. We had a great voice last night who came and herald the gospel here. He's my close brother and friend. We met each other here, Bishop William Hudson, who is the primate of the Pilgrim Churches. We had a business manager when we were young, even though I'm 11 years older than him. He was the child protege star on Amen. See, you know, people don't know your past, but they'll talk about it. But he was child protege for the show called Amen, along with Clifton Davis and a few people. And we only look at people when they become spiritual, but some of us were who we were before we got up here. Some of you ain't talking because you ain't nobody till you get up here. The mic for this generation is the new narcotic. It's a crack. Because after you perform, you get quiet. Give me, give me a towel. But my generation will stand for every generation and push you and dance with you. But you young people, y'all calm down when the music stops. But our meeting, I owned three businesses here. One business, I had three hair salons that I was a partner in on North Saratoga, Caroline, and on Rice's Town Road years ago. And uh, I knew a few people back then. I've ran some of the longest revivals in this city known to man. Your parents were there. You weren't even born. We were on, name some of the street, North Ave. Gold Street, uh, the old Word of Life Church, which then became purchased by the Empowerment Temple. We ran revivals at Bethel AME Church, everybody's church, and none of the revivals were less than two weeks. The longest one was six months. All right. And Baltimore has changed a little bit. It has changed a little bit. Y'all are a lot of people are no longer saved, they're safe. Y'all not going to talk on this side over here? I know some of you here for prophecy. It's coming, but let's talk. Prophecy can come to pass and you still go to hell. Y'all know that, don't you? Now, that's the... Now, all right. That's the strongest thing that I can tell you is it can come to pass and you still not make it. Candy has a good taste, but it has no nutritional value. Y'all gonna talk upstairs? So I, 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 I flew in from Norfolk doing a holy convocation or workers meeting for the Kojic Church. And when I landed, the Lord said, I need you to reset order in a friendly way. Because I am soon to come. You that don't believe in hell, don't blink, okay? Because it's real. If you believe it's real, clap. I want to know the percentage. If hell wasn't real, Jesus would have never said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Come on, word lovers. We're going to church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A lot of people are getting too relaxed in their salvation. 
but I didn't get saved. I'm almost done. I didn't get saved to go to heaven. I got saved not to go to hell. Because nobody, even probably in this room, has preached a sermon on heaven good enough for me to want to go. Y'all still saying the same old thing. Streets paved with gold, 12 gates to the city. I've seen houses like that. Okay, what we're looking forward to is not going to hell. And our ancestors preached it so well that you could feel the flame coming up your neck. This generation thinks, and some of them around row four and five are mad at me over here. They came to, uh, I guess, spy on a older gentleman, but you're too young to have that job. But I want to tell you something. And I'm looking in the direction on purpose, so no need to look away. I'm still the preacher that cast out demons, call it like it is. I don't play like that. Especially with young people. Don't be up here acting old. Act your age right now. See, when you grow up like that, church gets its essence back. We don't get so loose. I, I, I need to deviate from giving thanks to y'all. Stand up, uh, young man right there. You married? You near the pole. You married? I want you to stand up. I want to prophesy to you. Your ministry is about to actually grow, 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 but not without her. God said, I need to send her to protect his reputation. To be his safeguard. Tell him if he goes out there now without proper coverage, you know, he that find of a wife. Now, somebody close to you don't like that. I'm doing this to you. But I'm old school. Marriage is one man. One woman. Y'all don't agree. No, no. Everybody can go to church. But if we're going to live according to the teachings of the Bible. I'm preparing you because God says you and him have been having intimate discussions. You've been asking God for things secretly. You've been real uh, sensitive in your consecration right now. And God said, tell him I sent him here tonight to get a proper transfer. Tell him he will lose a few more friends, but he will lose no more funds. God's about to bless your going in and your coming out. And someone with clapping hands and a loud mouth shout yes. So I've come because I want this generation to refocus to the best of your ability on holiness. My generation never lived perfect, but we strove. And y'all have to not get so loose. Don't have baggy salvation. Oh, y'all got, what's that? Sandbagging. Don't have, pull your pants up and tighten your belt. Who, who's, Lord have mercy, who's David Reeves? Who's David? Oh, don't just raise your hand when an old person talking. How are you? Good. I never have anything bad to say, so y'all can take it easy. I'm saying the bad stuff while I'm talking. But when I prophesy, prophecy is for exhortation, edification, and comfort. So y'all can ease up. I see it, but I won't say it. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. That's the difference in your gift and mine. You young people say too much. We filter as you falter. But let me come back through here. Because some folk just want you to know they see everything, but you're more mature when you know what to say. And some of us, I want to see if 200 of you will scream, Jesus should have killed us when we were doing bad, but he let us live through all of it. And for that reason, we should praise him. Now, at that time, practice preaching would have made the music hit you. Pow! And we'd have got into what we call ecstasy. Like a narcotic drug. I want to say something to you, Mr. Born February the 3rd. If I'm right, let them know. 
Okay, thank you. Because you need to finally believe in prophets again because you've seen so much phony stuff going on to where you told God, I see all this, I love church, but people just so fake. So I'm trying to restore your belief. Am I talking right? Do you have a driver's license? Is it clean? Now it is. I guess you saw where I was going, huh? God is going to give you some type of new transportation so you can get from, from your new apartment where you're going to live. Uh -oh, oh, go, no, no, no. You can speak in tongues. That's legal. Especially when you're going to get a raise in a teaching job. Something in the education system. Are y'all talking or you're not? Everything that one of your relatives prayed over your life for, it's about to happen. You teach music? Okay. I'm going to have you run slowly around the church. As you're running, God says, I'm going to uh, speed up the time for his miracle because it's still, hold on. Ho, ho, mahashi, Hey, Hallelujah. Because it's still about nine months away, but I'm going to try to get it three months quicker. And when you run, those that need jobs and transportation, if they praise for you, they'll be next in line. Take your run and enjoy Jesus. We don't need no music. We need you. Be seated. Someone's upset with me. Just forgive me because my generation still believes one man, one woman. And I'm going to preach from my generation. The Lord showed me one or two that are preachers are upset that I said it. If that's your thing, preach it in your church. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve them like I was raised. Y'all ain't talking. I'm not upset with nobody. So what I was trying to get to before I give on it is people take for granted that they can get people at my age to come preach. When we go into caves and sabbaticals, we only come out for a purpose, especially when you're not in debt. You don't have no issues. It feels good to come out when you want to. See, you that ain't talking because you're jealous, but you don't know, you get it when you understand it. That all of us are not going to work for debt all of our lives. If you know that's you, shout, that's me. Somebody shout amen again. Who's India? I think I'm going to the camera now. I think I'm going to prophesy to folk online because if we can take their seed, then we can also give them a prophecy. But who's India? Is there anyone named India? But you weren't going to stand up. What is your last name? Blackwood, born October the 20th. Yeah, I want to talk to you because it was that road that gave me a problem. It was that road that you in. All right. But I'm going to say something to you. God's hand is so serious upon your life. That God says, tell her, she has no more excuses. She got to stop running. The Lord said, my hand's been on her since she was a child. Tell her I've given her chances to go find her own business, do her own thing. Think about moving, coming back, what state she going to. Tell her tonight she's under arrest. Tell her in 21 days, I will put her life on the best track that it's ever been on in her entire life. And somebody that loves Sister India ought to clap and Shabbat God as loud as you can. See, my generation would have been around her saying, praise him. Your generation won't because you want a prophecy. See? The desires are different. 
my generation always remain happy for who God was talking to. Your generation, like she got hers, come on over here. You're very selfish. I'm laughing because I hear somebody in that row. I wonder if Bishop know which one of us it was. It's the one that said that. Now you know. But it's okay. No sweat off my back. But children that don't respect their elders, your days are short. Extremely short. You keep jobs for just a little while. You get a car and it's repoed. You get an apartment and you get evicted. It's quick. Because disrespect will disconnect. Somebody shout, I understand that now. So... I just want y'all to know the reason why I came and I'm ready to preach is because this young man has a certain type of oil. All right, the Lord told me don't stop. So let me say this also for three or four people who jump for me. Some of you know that you're anointed and then some of you have people who tell you they're anointed because they're highly gifted. But I want to make this statement then I'm done. Grease and oil feel the same. Some of you are not oily, you're greasy. Because when you're anointed, you can sing off key and God still breaks shackles. I like you because most of your generation, they are exchanging grease. And the day that I feel that you've become that, I will no longer be able to support you. I support you, Prophet Andre, because you have something that my ancestors have. But I still want you to be relevant for those you must lead. I don't care if you have dreads or whatever. Just don't give up the blood. Don't give up the name Jesus. Y'all mighty quiet right now. Stay focused. Stay faithful. Be careful. Somebody told me I can hang around people and it don't bother me. Well, let me say this for two folk over here who want to be wealthy. I can hang around you, but I'm not going to let you hang me. And the second thing I want to say is whatever you feel comfortable around, you will soon do. So don't hang around people because they need you. They need Christ. They don't need you. Because what you hang around, you will soon become. I am honored, as I told Bishop William Hudson, to be one of your guests, even though I am your father. I am honored to see what God is doing in your life. Don't change. And I want everyone in here to bless God for the visionary of the power surge. Prophet, I don't hear nobody. Andre Frazier. You may be seated. You will stand two more times. One of the greatest gifted, anointed teachers of music, gospel, who is now a duly consecrated bishop who served by the side of my sister, the late Bishop Iona Locke, flew in and told me, I'm here because I want to hear you very proper. If I made him play on the keys right now, people's minds, my hand to God, would explode. All right, he's a professor, not just by anointing, but by uh, schooling. And uh, he duly was consecrated not too long ago, but he's always had the oil on his life since we were children. I want the Bishop Damien Sneed to stand so we can thank God. Can y'all thank God? Look him up. Go online. A genuine voice to the body of Christ. I pastor the Shabbat network of churches. It used to be called Shabbat Fellowship, but the millennials took it and now they call it a network. So I'm the bishop of a network, whatever that means. And few of my pastors have showed up on tonight. They didn't have to, but they did. And I want to give them their proper due. And I want you all to clap. You don't have to stand. But for Dr. Les McIntosh stand, I want to appreciate, come on, appreciate my children, my spiritual sons, 
On his right is Bishop Darrell Lewis, newly appointed. In the front row is Prophet Matthew Hughes. Will y'all thank God for him? Bishop Roma, now listen. Y'all think that women cannot be bishops. I'm an equal opportunity person because most of you were raised by your mother. See how quiet it got? I'd rather a woman have the position than someone wanting to be one that should not. Please don't take it personal. Because every time I say it, I see young folk cringing. You must not know the Bible. If y'all had the grandparents we had, you might do what you want to do, but you're going to hide it for a long, long, long time. Because they're going to get that switch and beat the devil right up. Whatever they can cast out, they're going to beat out. And I can look at two of the young men and tell they ain't never had a whooping. Come to my house for about 30 days. But Bishop Doctor, in a earned way, Roma Benjamin is with us on tonight. She's a part of our network of churches, but she is so highly gifted. And most women that hold ministries dress a certain way. They're real deverish, and I like it. But she comes as she chooses. She does this, and this does not take away who she is. She's authentically herself. Stand, Dr. Bishop Roma Benjamin. Will y'all clap and scream for one of ours? And she been holding that hairdo down for years. After this, I'm going to preach. When I first used to come here, magnolia, that sounds like a flower. Am I prophesying to somebody online or in the building? Anyone's name in here, Mac, magnolia? All right. I want to look at, are y'all looking online when I'm talking to these people? Anybody? I, uh, all right, good. I want you to tell Miss Magnolia to type, I'm present. Then you can tell whoever it is to tell me. I want her to know that she's going to be worth three point. Oh, she's online. Okay. I want you to know. See, y'all waiting for me to be wrong, right? Y'all going to wait till you die. Because this here ain't fake at all. Nor do I use it to raise money at all. That's why I prophesy first. And then preach and give you time to leave without giving. But Sister Magnolia, I want you to know that you're about to be worth about $3.5 million. Tell me what she's saying if she's writing. $3.5 million. I see you franchising three businesses in three states. I'm not sure if you should go to California, but I see you being agents for artists, uh, agents for actors. I see you writing books. I see you ghostwriting. I see you doing a lot of things. Can y'all ask her if she's writing y'all for real? What does she do? She said, what? She said, yes, sir. Can you ask her what does she do for a living? If she can type it in simplicity. Go ahead and work this thing. I bet we get more people online than any night now. Watch. They signing on. He prophesying to us. <laughs> she said, she said, that's what she does. Well, I want you to know that when you get all this money, find me. My P.O. box is 680. You have not because you asked not. But God said, you are a prophetess. And the Lord told me to say one more thing. I'm not sure how to say this. He's blessing someone, uh, this is going to touch your heart, who's been praying for you, whose last name is Butler, B-U-T-L-E-R. Ask her, who is that? Does she have anyone in her family with the last name Butler? If y'all can have Zoom and FaceTime and Face Live, then I can talk to folk online, can I? Huh? 
Oh, those are her parents? Tell her that one of them, which is the mother, is going to live a very wholesome long life so that she can write her the biggest check she ever wrote. As a matter of fact, whoever it is just had a birthday in February. Let her know that. Now, now the man in the back talking to me is my son. Elder Isaiah Mixon is my son's son. So uh, uh, he belongs to this church, but he is leased with an option. But that is my son. Clap for my son in the back that's working with this wonderful ministry. And clap for the pastor of this church, the Honorable Bishop Sean Bell. And clap louder because I'm sure that he had to have a heart for young people to let them use his facility for the past four years or so. All right, you may be seated. One of my best millennial preachers is here. He's my guy. And when I come back, I'm going to go preach at his church. Normally, I don't say that out loud, but I'm saying it out loud because I'm proud of him. When I knew him, he used to be a barber and his daddy used to let me preach at the church. Father passed recently. He's carrying the torch blazing. He has not changed his style, but that boy can preach. Dr. Pastor Aaron Hannah Stan, so we can thank God. Can y'all scream for my young brother all right now i'm gonna preach now but i need y'all to talk to me as i preach because i see some of you are still itching for a prophecy if the lord shall hit me we will go to commercial and come back to the text amen love is is it la rosa who is this you? Yeah, we've already gone back to commercial. What is it, Bolton? So now, are you Moya or Bolton? Oh, you're both. Is your son Reginald a Moya or Bolton? Oh, hello, Reginald. You're a Bolton. When was your birthday? Okay, it passed. I'm going to have you run for your mother because the house she's in now is not hers. Run slow. Hold on. Slow down. And when you run this time, run for the full salvation of your older brother. Are y'all praising or gazing? What are you doing? Leave her down there till she's ready to get up. That's old school. See, if I wanted to start ecstasy, we would let the music come in, but we need to be sober. You need to know it's God without it being glamorized by anything. Whoever said it was not being disrespectful, you're on this side near the pole. You said, now, now, now I know he's a real prophet. Congratulations, and we appreciate you. Get your Bibles. Is he reading minds? No, the Holy Ghost knows the thoughts of the people, see, and the intents of the heart. None of this is me. I'm just the vessel. If somebody take a cup of water and throw it at you, you can't get mad at the cup. You got to get mad at who threw the water. All right, y'all missed it. So if I'm prophesying, you can't get mad at the vessel. And you better be careful being mad at who made me prophesy. Once we see it properly, we'll start functioning properly. I hear my shako bahaya. I hear the Lord say something though. As a matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to read. I want just 10% of the church to take about 30 seconds and 
praise God with all your strength. Somebody in the back wants a prophecy, but you're not ready because first you've got to ask God to deliver you as well. You've been saved too long to live so shady. So don't summon it. If he's real, tell him, speak back here. See, when you do that, you're practicing witchcraft without knowing it. Let God peek. Pick you, don't you pick. Because when people want something before it's time, it never turns out well. Hey, Brother Reginald, you're not married, right? Well, well, I need to tell you, she's in, in the picture. God said, you don't have to know it. She is actually waiting on you. God says, and you will own one of the biggest businesses that your family has ever seen since the Bolton family has been in action. Are y'all jealous or are you happy? Because the more we praise for someone else. Young man, how old are you? 21. Did you go to college? Why did you skip it? You skipped it because you went to real estate. Did you acquire your license? Are you practicing, be honest, real estate? Your practice starts on the 18th, so when did you get your license? It's hard to pass the test, so we want to congratulate you on that right to you. With a person, here go my other nephew, but with a person of so much accomplishment outside of college, I want you to act like I'm your father and hear me. I want you to only begin to sit with people that are professionals. You're a prophet. You got away with it for a little while, but it's coming back. You slipped off, but it's in you. That's why you can tell when someone's fake. And you may get in a car sometime and talk above yourself and be like, that person ain't real. That's not God. I hope you don't say it about me tonight, but let me say something to you. What, we can't have humor as we... Oh, okay. I'm going to have you run because I'm going to ask God to make your business grow quick because most people don't grow till after year two or three in the real estate business. You said they told you that? All right, then I'm a prophet because I confirmed. They told you last month, don't get excited, overwhelmed, because most people don't start turning properties, especially during this market, especially with other people with more experience that are already out there, right? Have you chose what company you're going to work for? Really? Now, that's a very, uh, I'm going to say dominant, not predominant, dominant uh, company. You know, they're down on the stock exchange, S&P 500. All right. So I'm going to ask you to run slow. When you run, God says, I'm going to reassign the angels that once walked with him back to him. Because tell him when he got a little out the way, I put them on pause and said, wait. But God said, you got them back as you're running. And somebody with a loud mouth and clapping hands. Let me do one more, then preach as fast as I can. Where's the man that sang? Come here a moment. Oh yes, you can applaud for the people that just sang you into God's presence. I enjoyed you. There's not too many singers I don't know in the professional world, in the secular world, gospel or R&B. My brothers are the old singing group guy. Those are my baby boys. First New Jack singing group, jam, groove me, let's chill, tease me, all of that. I have prophesied to many gospel artists who are now great, be it Commission, Marvin Sapp, uh, Miss Adams. I can name them because when you're online, if you're lying, they'll call you, right? right all right. And as you were singing, I saw God building bricks around you. Now, don't get mad with me. The bricks were twofold. I'm going to tell you what they are. One is for a few years away. And one is almost a few months away, if you believe it. 
God said tonight when he sang and his passion hit his ears, hit God's ears, that the first bricks, pair of bricks that was being built was for his wife and his new house. The second one was for a church in the future that you will pastor because God says your singing has brought you to another level. I don't hear anybody talking. And God said, this has been upon you since your mother's womb. He said, he understands why you or your wife would not want this. Because right now the present church is infected. But he's not sending you to pastor the infection. He said, the infection will be clear about time I put you in that next seat. And anyone that wants to rejoice with this man of God, I would that you would do it right now. Who's his wife? Come hug him, baby. Because he feel better when you hug him. Mm -hmm. Don't get jealous. Man who finds the right wife obtains favor. And when she hugged him, the Lord said the price of the house is down $20,000. I hear you over here. I don't mind because you you are like, I wonder whether these folk believe everything he's saying is God. Your miracle only goes as far as your belief. Let me talk to my generation and y'all who got old school flavor. Is there anything? I can't hear your vocal cords. Is there anything? And what is the answer? All right, be seated. That's great. The book of Exodus chapter 2 verses 1 through 9. I'm going to now cut and paste because the time is lengthy and I have already prophesied here more than I do in other churches. Last night and tonight I was on a prophetic rush. I don't know what happened. But Exodus chapter 2. You know, some of you should just scream on this. You don't need a whole paragraph. Why not get happy off of it is done? Hey! Why not believe in your spirit that that man does not have to call me out as long as God calls me up? Shout as loud as you can, it is done. My generation was saying, while you're trying to figure it out. What am I hey, hey, glory. Why you mahashanda behind? Y'all need no music, it's in your spirit. But while you're trying to figure it out. Anybody that knows the rest, finish it as loud as you can. Trouble in my way, I gotta cry sometimes. My generation should be talking out so much trouble. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I feel good, but that's all right. Because Jesus is what? We'll fix it. Anybody who wants to confirm your neighbor's success, just jump up and tell them, it's already done. No music. Tell them like you're a preacher. Say, it's already done. Yes. Oh, Lord. Exodus chapter 2. Verses 1 through Namahashandai. And for the first time, you will uh, get a chance to see me preach by reading my notes. Normally I do not. One of my sons came, Matthew from Milwaukee, came in my suite and uh, said to me, what are you preaching? I said, it's from scratch. So this is not a rewarmed message. 
So you Africans gonna talk to me tonight because what I preach once, I preach five different ways in the future. So you're getting the original version. That means someone in here is a special order. Why don't you brag and say, God wrote this for me. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife of the house of Levi, daughter of Levi. Thank you, whoever said that. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. First thing I'm going to say for about 20 of you who are serious about your future is God says it's about to begin because you're in that third month. Hear me. And you can no longer be hid. So whatever God's been hiding you or hiding you from or who he's been keeping you away from is because he's making you a 2.0 version of yourself. By the end of March, you will march into something that the devil said you would never have and your mouth should shout yes. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, dubbed it with slime and pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river brinks, brink. Verse 4, the sister Miriam stood afar off, for with what would be done. You know, that's deep Bible reading, with what would. To with what would be done to him. And then it says, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at that river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Are y'all bored with the Bible? Look at somebody and tell them God's about to call your name. Tell them somebody you don't know is about to fetch you. Just go on and tell them. When she had opened this particular uh, basket, she saw the child and behold the baby wept and behold i'm almost there the baby wept see this generation don't know that when a preacher pauses and reads a thing several times that that's where the hoop will be at the end and behold baby the baby wept and she had compassion on him and said this is one of the hebrew children then said his sister pharaoh's daughter uh, shall i go to call thee a nurse from the hebrew women that they might nurse the child for thee and pharaoh's daughter said to her go and the maid went and she called the child's mother y'all didn't the front row's missing the text pharaoh's daughter said unto her take this child away nurse it for me and I will give thee thy wages see I'm gonna help some of you that are on the slow bus so I'm gonna help 50 of you who will scream right now this baby belongs to the woman that Pharaoh's daughter is about to hire what she would have had to do for free she's about to get paid to do it all right hold on I'm going to talk to talkers. All of you that feel like you've been used and you were there when people needed you, but nobody was there when you needed them, you're about to get paid for every person you helped for free. Don't just do this. Talk to me. Closed mouths don't get fed. God said, this year owes you a check. And the check has to be worth all the hell you've been through previous years. Look at somebody and tell them, I'll take that. The woman took the child and she nursed it. You may be seated. Back to verse 6. I'm a third of the way through the text. That man's going to make me preach and we're going to get you paid. The one on the end. Y'all think I'm playing? Remember who I pointed to. Pharaoh's daughter, back to verse 6. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And the result of this baby weeping 
she had compassion on him. And not only did she have compassion, I wish I had young people, she identified him as someone that she was supposed to kill. I'm going to go one more time. See, I said I wasn't going to play with y'all. I should have preached this at my church. She is opening a case with something in it that she's supposed to kill. But what's going to make her change her motive for ten folk who will jump? Because this is what I need y'all to know I'm about to preach. Is God says what saved your life is I'm now about to take care of the crybabies. See, all of you full of pride that won't cry, acting all crazy, you ain't hurt nobody but yourself. Sometimes you have to let the real emotions that are in you out. Because if not, talk to me, ten of you, you're going to explode at the wrong time. Hey, boy. And probably hurt someone you love. Because they were the only target at that time. Look at somebody and tell them you got the right to be a crybaby. Tell them, go on, cry, baby. This baby is crying from within a basket. So from that, I have a subtopic. Now, you that drove me in the truck and things, if you don't talk to me, do not drive me back. And that I mean. It is very important that when you take one topic and you talk about it, that you find a subtopic that allows you to hoop your way out of the hole. So some of you may scream on this. You that are crying, you that are hurt, you that admit, not in front of everybody, but around people you can trust, that I'm really frustrated, I'm angry, I'm trying to live better, but things ain't changing. I'm on the brink of doing something stupid and you're admitting that. The Lord says, I'm about to bless you for this one reason. And here's my subtopic. God says, the reason why you don't fit with other people, even your friends, is you're out of the box. Some of your buddies only liked you when you were the you that needed them. Now that you're a person that's coming out of the season of need, Oh, y'all ain't talking over. I'm, well, I'm going to preach. Into the season of supply. They now trying to change on you because the only ministry they had is when you were in need. Some people don't know how to preach to success. Especially in the black church because most people in the black church who are anointed are still competing. So if you hoop in the G, they going to hoop in the A. You know, everybody going to modulate. All of them that sing that riff, somebody going to do a longer riff. You have to first tell God, Lord, let me talk to folks. Don't use me anymore until I do a Brian McKnight. One more cry, one last cry before I leave it all behind. Oh, y'all oh, y'all too say, I got to put it out of my mind. Stop living a lie. Because I guess I'm down to my last cry. Weeping may endure. Somebody rebuked me for quoting some R&B lyrics. Weeping may endure for a night. When you get married, don't take gospel with you. You're going to end up at Judge Judy Court. Because marriage is for your flesh and God is for your spirit. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy. For some of you it has not come but it is on its way. And I'm going to prophesy to the, those who will verbalize your sentiments. By the end of March you're going to have a lot to laugh for. And God said I will take your tears of sorrow. And return them to you in joy. Then he told an angel, bottle up every tear. Let not one tear hit the ground. 
Commission wrote a song before some of you were born. He bottles up every tear. He understands every fear. So we must put our trust. Just look up tomorrow's sun. We'll let you know your life's not done. Just look around. Love's pouring down. Trust in God. Do, 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 do. I remember that when I first had my firstborn son, who is now 40, I asked 10 people to talk to me like you're Baptist. My firstborn fell one day in front of me and I ran toward him very quickly because he was screaming like he lost his mind. And I programmed as a father, methodically told my boy for those listening, don't cry, you're a big boy. I then found out later from my 10 members who will be debt free, stopping a person from crying might be the worst thing you could ever do. Talk to me upstairs. If a child falls, they should cry. And the lie that I told my son because my daddy told it to me and his daddy told it to him is prematurely you a big boy some of you some of you the biggest mistake you made is looking like something you're not already trying to get somewhere too quickly you're not meant to receive success until you've cried a little while. I think I find more help here, but I thought it would be over there. He was an infant. I know every night y'all have people screaming, running the scriptures, but I need to take my time, but I'm not going to take much time. Because in the black family, young boys are taught not to cry. But when the daddy sees his daughter fall, he lets her cry, picks her up, hugs her, pats her. You hungry? You need something? Y'all don't ask the black young boys nothing. Just get on up, brush off, you big. Yeah. So as we get older, we don't know how to handle pressure. So we have nervous breakdowns. Y'all don't hear me. We become suicidal because we're holding emotions in that should have been let out while we were children. If I got 10 dead free people pushing me, shout, talk to me. Crying is a human emotion. I did my research, need about 25 more minutes and found out that when people cry, it brings benefits. I'm sorry that I'm boring some of you well-dressed young people that act 40 when you're only 25. And y'all practice enough to hoop but not live enough to help. Let me include something else for your consideration. And when I say this, if it makes sense, run over to me and high five my back. Don't hurt me. Just touch me back there. I'm about to read. All of this is fresh. What God made me uh, write. And on this, only folk who study the Bible would get excited. Those who don't, you'll catch it. But those who are actually students of the word, this might excite you. Let me include something else for your consideration. Most people are born with a purpose even if they weren't born on purpose. I believe God created me to preach. No such thing. That's not Bible. You're wrong. There is a difference in being born with a purpose. And being born on purpose. See, you won't talk, but it's your generation that started the past 15 years of new sermons. And y'all started this thing called purpose. 
what y'all didn't do is you didn't study because when you're in purpose, nothing works out for your good. It works out for his. Oh, y'all quite all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to them who are the called of God, not according to your purpose. And normally for my three scholars, when you are doing it for his purpose, it frustrates you because your purpose has to wait. You still have a life on purpose, but right now you got to finish the life in purpose. Come on, help me preach to a neighbor that's leaning over trying to slob and tell your neighbor, you on purpose, but I'm in purpose. Let me lay this down because you're young don't mean I'm not going to talk to you like I would talk to at any mega church. Satan comes after some of you not because you have a purpose. Because some of you talking about the devil hates me because he knows who I am. He don't, he don't care who you are. You see how this generation talk? The devil, Satan has never cared about who any of us are. He's after you because God put something in you. And the only reason why he wants to kill you is if he can, he can kill the purpose at the same time. Now, on this note, if 10 of you jump over here, three of you here, I'll be happy. Some of you only survive all the hell you've been through because your purpose is strong. It's extremely, not your ministry. Not your gifts or your calling. Because none of those things are the same. You can preach and go to hell. You can prophesy and burn hell, turn hell wide open, but you cannot live in purpose and miss God. This generation did something else that I'm not going to teach, but y'all get up off me and talk to me so I can get happy. And that is y'all have abused the word grace. Grace is not the continuance to sin. See, some of you are using grace to sin on purpose. But when you really understand grace, you don't sin to stay in purpose. Let me give one more rule that I only state in my church. Don't stand up if you ain't going to speak up. I'm halfway through the sermon. There are only a few that God has chose in purpose in the Bible who have names. I'm going to name four, but I'm not going to prove them. But I'm just getting to my point. But eight of you push me. And there are certain people like Jacob, Samson, Jeremiah, and Jesus. Let me say it again till y'all talk back. Jacob, Samson, Jeremiah, and Jesus. That the Lord had to speak to their parents before they got pregnant. Oh, yeah. and told them you're going to get pregnant on purpose because who you're birthing is in purpose so the church folk hate other church folk because some folk come to church on purpose and some folk come to church in purpose when you come to church in purpose you have church when church is over you're in fellowship with God, even on your job in the grocery store. Some of y'all women in here are so quiet because your purpose is just to be a preacher's wife. But let me talk to the other women. You looking like a first lady and first lady ain't in the Bible. And if you're a first, that means there could be a second. When you become a man's only and you're so good he don't want to cheat, that's because he found a wife not on purpose. I got to get out here. He found a wife rooted in purpose. I met you on purpose, I left on purpose. But if I meet you in purpose, 
it's hard to get out of purpose. He told the mother of Jacob, two nations are in your womb and the elder shall serve the younger. I said, I wasn't going to do this. My son ain't talking to me tonight. He, he walking around like a bishop. He better come out here and talk to his daddy. He turned around. And the Bible said after God spoke this man's future, he was fighting to come out first. Now, when I say to somebody run and jump for me, if he would came out first, he would have never been in purpose. Because God spoke, whoever comes out last would be the one I'm using. So some of y'all that feel like you are behind, even though the liars have the mic and the fake anointed folk have the mic and you could do it from a pure place. God said, it's not your turn yet. Don't fight for position. Fight for purpose. Some of you ain't talking because some of you are better sitting than they are standing. What was my only request for some of you in purpose? If you're going to stand up. Oh, come on now. Talk to the man. But if Jacob could have heard what God said, he would have let his brother go out first. The Bible said he came out holding on to the ankle of his brother. That's why we call him heel. He came out holding on and had a strong grip. I shouldn't teach all this. Had a strong grip. See, some of you that have a purpose to preach, all you do is take what we say and remix it. But you that are in purpose, you actually eat it. Most folks say, oh yeah, I got my sermon for Sunday, but do you have a soul that's going? So see, who guaranteed you Sunday was coming? You take life for granted. Dr. Hannah, Jacob never heard what God said, but he held on to his heels. So the only way Esau could come out is God had to make Jacob be thrust back in the womb. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And take his hand off of his brother. Anyone that jumps on this, I promise you the end of March will bless you. And that is some of you could easily do worse to them that's trying to hurt you. But God said, take your hands off your brother. Now, I want to help you. Because what they saying about you is partially true. What you say about them. Come on, talk to me, babies. Cry, babies. Cry. You, you, you did some of what they said, but not all of it. And what's terrible is you did it with them. But the reason why they're trying to kill you is they want to get rid of your purpose. The days of practicing preachers will end by 2025 and we will hear from purpose driven preachers. I asked you for the last time, do not stand up. But he held on to his brother's heel. When I say this brother, Dr. Preacher, Five of y'all up here will catch it, two of you. Then I'll move quickly because I don't want to waste this information. But he was holding on to his brother almost with power to pull him back until somebody took his hand off of him to where he was strong in the womb. He was fighting not when he came out. He was fighting while in the womb. All right, y'all didn't catch that either. If God's about to release you, don't come out to fight. You're fighting now. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. He fought so well that God let him keep his strength. His strength to hold on, his strength to hold on was his gift. I'm going to say it again. For so, His strength to hold on was his gift. His grip was so tight. Preach the gospel. His grip was so tight for 30 of you that even when he wrestled with God, God had to tell him, let me go. And he told God, I will not. 
Now I need talkers. I listened to you when you told me let go of my brother. But I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I want you to tell your neighbor these two words and say it with power like you're full of purpose. Just tell them, hold on. Some of you are increasing in your anointing, but weak in your ability to hold on. Let me talk like I'm old from my generation because my generation just sitting around. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes. On Mashat Kuba, on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. He, we're going to move on from there. He told, oh, well, let me give this to you for free because it's your uh, service and I want you to have enough sermons because you do them justice because you respect your ancestors and not lie and say God gave it to you. You say I was inspired by someone, right? But let me say this to you and see if you jump and see if the prophet jump with you. You ready? Jacob held on to God till God dislocated the, the hollow of his thigh until the children of Israel no longer eat the shank from the thigh, right? And the reason why Jacob, because I used to preach like you young people when I was a premature preacher, I preached fancy sermons like praise him with a limp, right? And it worked, I promise you. Praise him with a limp, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise him with a limp, because praise is supposed to have no kind of, of, of diva posture to it. It's supposed to look radical and ridiculous. It's supposed to be laughable. But as I got older, the Lord told me this for Ten Folk Who Will Jump. He said his brother Esau who he fought in the womb was still wanting to kill him now that they were grown and out and God disabled Jacob y'all gonna miss this while he was headed in the direction of his angry brother but the reason why Esau had compassion on who he should have killed now I'll see whether you scream 10 seconds is because when he saw his brother he saw that his brother is what we call save because when you save your walk change y'all man he recognized see some of y'all preach salvation but you can't walk it now you gonna make me preach and prophesy because that's what I'm hoping this generation finds is their love for the scripture not for preaching engagements. His brother saw his walk change and never killed him. He reunited with him. From a walk. And for those theologians who preach in pastor or who travel and have an itinerary. You, you are an itinerary preacher or singer. Scream loud on this. No one knew his name was changed but him. So you ain't got to announce yourself as bishop, prophet, man. Just go on and walk. To every higher, uh, 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 every higher title, there should be a stronger walk. Some of y'all make your title look terrible when we catch you outside the church, but... That man going to make me preach and you are. Samson, you know he was the strongest man in the Bible world. Do you know why he was the strongest? I hear what y'all going to say and you're right, but you need to go back to the basics. You're going to say because he never cut his hair, this, that, and the other, and you would be right. That was the covenant made with God after he came out. But the reason why he's born the strongest, I want to see if anybody screams, is because God spoke to who carried him and told her, don't drink. You got to be careful who's birthing some of y'all. Y'all ain't tough. All right, I won't. If I question your leader, you questionable too.
You keep following a crackhead bishop, you going to smoke crack in a minute. Talk to me, you stand. Nobody's perfect, but at least follow somebody that wants to do better. Samson gets strength because the rules were given to his mother and father first. Don't drink and never cut his hair. After he got grown, he had to continue that. So here I go for somebody who would jump and scream up here and that young man to jump for me. Every time Samson, as a young boy, cried for wine, seeing all his other folk drink, the mama said, cry, baby. Oh, young. But you ain't drinking. Y'all ain't talking. Because every sip is going to take strength away from who you are. Every, oh, y'all are quiet now. I'd rather your friends call you a crybaby and you be strong when you need it than for you to be an alcoholic like them and can't fight your way out of anything. Now, some of you won't talk to me because the sermon is too critical. Most folk who are highly anointed have terrible addictions, but I'm going to leave y'all alone, right? But anyone with an addiction and an anointing should choose one or the other. Don't use your anointing to cover your addiction. Use the anointing for what it's supposed to be used for. It destroys the yoke. I'm preaching, I'm about to yell. I don't care what you used to be in your past life. I don't even care what you were up until tonight. But after you hear a word from the Lord, you are held accountable for your next steps. Some preacher in here, I won't describe him as highly upset because you're here tonight only because of a girlfriend you want to talk to. You don't even want her saved. You got a hotel room, but she ain't coming tonight. Now let's get back. See if I be a lying prophet. Bet she don't come to your room tonight. He told Jeremiah, before I knew you. Before your mama knew your daddy, I already knew you. Not just that, here's a preaching term, ordained you. And he told him that while he was a child. God did to Jeremiah what I did to my little son who's now 40. He basically told him, don't say you're a child, but Jeremiah was at least five or six. So Jeremiah grew up grown before his time, and because he missed out on his childhood, y'all ain't gonna scream, he became the lamenting prophet. He cried in his old age. Now, if you tell me I preached tonight, I'm going to tell you I sure did. Last night, I told you I was all right, but you don't have to tell me tonight. And the only reason why I'm preaching this good is because of who I'm preaching to. Who I'm preaching for. I believe, and y'all won't scream, that you babies are my replacement. But you got to cry while you can't. But we don't need cry grown-ups. I can only accept the crying and all the temper tantrums from the kids. And then there was one more that we should get excited over. Then I'm going to condense the rest. You should get excited over this 30 of you who are standing screaming. There was one that Jesus sent a word to a virgin. Now you got to be a mature Christian to believe somebody can get pregnant without sexual 
uh, activity. And if you can believe in that, then you can believe he can resurrect the dead and he can pay your bills without a job. If you believe in the virgin birth for real, then you should believe everything else. The mother of Jesus said to Gabriel, said these words, I'm giving deep words for each one. This is my last character. She said to Gabriel for 10 talkers, how can I, seeing I know no man? What I got from that to tell some of you who were crying, who may have missed certain things and now you're getting older and wish you had them a long time ago, catch this and then scream for yourself. He basically told Mary, you're going to get there without the process. And what you get will not be attached to nobody. I need you to have a Jesus story. Most of you give credit to people for helping you, but there's only a handful of us who the Lord says, you're all mine. I want to talk to talkers and I never come when you want me, but I'm always on time. Oh, the preachers are not talking, but they'll get in the office, love your dad, peace of God, talk now. Jesus was not even in Mary's womb when Gabriel said, thou shall have a son. Let me tell you, his birth was so powerful for 30 men and women who would scream that Isaiah saw it 600 years before it happened. Isaiah said, and a son, a child shall unto us. A child shall be born unto us. A son is given in the government. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Then he gave us the name Emmanuel with an eye. Isaiah was so much of an eagle eye prophet like I'm trying to be for you tonight for those who will scream. He not only saw his death, he saw his burial and he was wounded for our transgress. Isaiah, and I'm here to tell some of you, I would not come if I didn't see you surviving your past and about to walk into your future. This is not a place service. It would be a disservice to all of you who have prayers that are unfulfilled and requests that have not been granted for me to just show my preaching skills. Let me hear F just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah. See, see, those on purpose just woke up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those in purpose, like, forget all that. Finish this right here because. And, she, and this angel told her, his name shall be called Emmanuel. That name meant God with us. God with us. God in us. Talk to me, scholars. God with us, God in us, which means when Jesus was in her womb, he could do nothing as long as he was being carried. And some of you have God with you but not working for you. The only time salvation could even begin is after he is born. He is not an insult or a threat in the womb. But once he comes out as a child, y'all are going to miss this. The first things the Jews will tell you for screamers is no child can breathe properly back in the day after they are born until they're held upside down and spanked on the butter. Oh, yeah. And once they cry, yeah, they announce the child is alive. Y'all ain't talk. And once the devil heard the cry of a baby. Oh, y'all he was so threatened for screamers that he put a hit out on all children two years old and down. Because he didn't care what he looked like. He knew what generation he was in. I'm almost where I'm going. I'm almost where I want to preach. He wasn't trying to just kill a child. He was trying to kill an entire generation.
If you jealous of good preaching and teaching, then you ain't never been called to preach. That's the bottom line. Beautiful women that are secure love complimenting other beautiful women. I wouldn't have said it like that. I'd have said it like this. It ain't your night, so don't worry about how you would say it. Here is where you jump for at least three seconds and scream and watch March bless you. All of these sons that I mentioned, they were actually spoken about before they were born. No, their purpose, their reason, why they're coming. And God said, the reason why some of you tried one thing and it didn't work, tried another thing and it didn't work, because you were born in purpose. Y'all ain't. And God said, I let you do you for a little while. Time to do me now. Y'all ain't. Look at somebody and tell them, time to do God now, baby. I'm about to close with this last paragraph and then give you three uh, points and holler. In, in some key. Dr. Hamlet, you talk to me because I trust you. I believe that there's a group of people in here who have been branded before birth. Yes. If you even believe that you jump up and show yourself and say, that is me. The way you know it's you is you never wanted to preach. You had other plans for your life. But the Lord crept in and said, I know the plans I have for you. See, y'all are missing plans that will end up with you having a future. Y'all forgive me. I love them. I just need folk to pick on, but they ain't been talking to me upstairs enough. I believe there's a group of people is the reason why I'm here that is branded you've been branded before birth and whoever you are you are of this generation now here we go for something deep that I didn't want to write but ten of you got to scream when you hear it you fit in spaces and places that no other generation could function in Secondarily for screamers, you being attacked by my generation. They don't like you and they won't let you. Reason being, you don't look like us. If I'm preaching when I'm quiet, then y'all talk. Because I'm about to free all of you who look unsaved. That includes you too at times. There's a group of people that have been branded before birth. Whoever you are, especially the younger generation, you fit in spaces and places that the generation before you could never function. Because we were raised too much in what was called doctrine. Let me read my next thing because y'all didn't say nothing. I'm moving forward. God has also given whoever you are a grace. Where you can mingle with the world and not lose who you are. My generation told us come out from amongst them. But how can they get saved if we keep avoiding them? I want to preach my generation wasn't wrong. They were limited. All you preachers in here buying expensive suits to look like a bishop, you wasting money. Because the church ain't headed in that direction no more. Studying. I should let Isaiah preach the rest of this. To speak to this generation is intense. The reason why many of my generation can't preach to you know your grandparents, I need help us, is you have a gift called you think out of the box. You don't have a true resemblance of our last generation. As a matter of fact, for screamers who won't get offended but scream loud, your purpose looks more like an Egyptian. Huh. 
I'm almost there. And God is allowing you to be raised by them, but never become them. He's allowing you to dress like them, do your hair like them. But the end of your life is you got to go back to them and say, let my people. I'm about to go to church now. The saying is true, but it's more true now. Don't judge a book. Look at some of you acting real holy and deep and sanctified. I wonder why I keep getting invited by young and old preachers. Why God is keeping me relevant. He said, because your generation stuck. And those that are not stuck go too far. You got to give them enough to let them know who they are and let me take them the rest of the way. I don't have to dress like y'all to be like y'all. But I have to learn how to address what's dressing. When I grew up, let me hear that F again. Ah, but when I grew up, we had school clothes, plate clothes, and church clothes. Your parents ain't got that kind of money no more. You buying your own clothes. Our parents would say, take off your church shoes. And now your club clothes is your church clothes. Is your work clothes. And I want to put this verse on top of this sandwich for Tenfold Cool Star jumping for yourself. Man looketh on the outward appearance. Y'all better help me. I'm on your side. But God looks at the heart. I know that ain't an F, but I'll be there. God looks at the heart. God is not leaving you over braids and dreads and my generation happy that's just the mere fact that they got free enough to wear pants they still bothering y'all but they sent us to hell for red lipstick my generation getting fly now they using AI pictures on Facebook good God almighty But y'all help me grab a neighbor and tell him again, man, look at on the outward appearance. But God looks at your heart. The term out of the box simply means the person out of the box is remarkable, exceptional, and extraordinary. Will you please take the liberty one time with humility and tell your neighbor, I'm all that. That's the bottom line. I'm remarkable. I'm exceptional, I don't hear no talkers, and I'm extraordinary. Because if I wasn't, I would act like the way you want me to act. But the mere fact that if I act like I want to act, it will give you a reason to say I'm not who I am. I've got to let you know you only living because I'm extraordinary. I'm exceptional. I'm remarkable. Mm. The term let me hear that F again. The, but the term think out of the box means you think different. You're unconventional. And finally, you have a new perspective. I may not think like you think. And I may not say it like you say it. And I may not package it like you package it but one thing i do know is i'm saved sanctified holy holy ghost filled see if you knew it was you you'd be talking fire baptized i've got jesus on my side and i'm running for my life Y'all get somebody else's hand and make sure they're one of those who are not against you and say, can I testify one more time for myself? 
tell them, hey neighbor, I want to tell you I'm saved. Sanctified. Stay behind me. Holy Ghost filled. And I'm fire baptized. See, if they look at you, they will say, not the way you're dressed, not wearing earrings as a man, not wearing a bun on top of your head. But I'm so glad. I wish I had a talk. I'm so glad that the God that we all serve, he looked beyond all of our faults and he saw my needs. Please get somebody else's hand. Look them in the face like you ain't scared and say, oh, neighbor. Y'all ain't no preaching generation. Y'all faking. Get some else and say, oh, neighbor. The God that I serve. Give me some monitors. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think shake another neighbor's hand and look him in the face and say oh neighbor congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life come on y'all can't preach to one you need to preach to a whole church get you a one member church and say oh neighbor nobody told me that the road would be easy but I Uh, I, I don't believe I wish I had my church that he's brought us this far just to leave us <laughs> grab the last person's hand you can and say oh, neighbor if you are one of those who can think out of the box you don't have to wait till the battle's over but you can shout out i'm about to go to you can shout oh you can shout you can shout right now say yes say yes lord now i want you to find a Somebody that's got the Holy Ghost and say, oh, neighbor, I'm leaning and depending on Jesus every step of the way. Lord, if I stumble, give me more grace. Come on, Zion and talk to brother hall and I, and prophesy to your neighbor and say by the end of march you're coming out of your box when the lord opens up your case the first thing you gotta do is cry i cried and i cried I wish I could go home now and I cried until I found the law get somebody else hand and make sure that's a good person and say oh not only did I cry I prayed and I prayed I prayed all night long I prayed prayed uh, until I found the Lord uh, the person next to you might be your assassin now 
because now that you're praising they're rolling their eyes they won't shout because they know you got less than three weeks to get ready for your new level and I don't know why some of y'all are so quiet tonight when Pharaoh could have killed you when you could have died in a car wreck you should have died from an overdose you could have had HIV from all the fornicating you did but Jesus told death touch not my anointing leave my children alone I want you to grab your own self and say self you listen to me tonight you deserve a night to scream a night to dance a night to clap a night to leap because I should have died a long time ago but I had power to hold to God unchanging hands grab your neighbor and don't let them go tell them try to get away from me and see how hard it is and tell them the reason why you can't get away from me is I'm showing you how much God does not want to let you go you tried to go back to the world but God said stay here you tried to marry the wrong person but God said stay here you tried to leave your church but God said stay here because y'all ain't talking. I want you to get somebody else's hand that's looking at you and say, oh, neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. The God that I serve, he's a mighty good God. You ought to tell three people around you the God He's a mighty. Look at your neighbor telling these three words. They don't get happy. Don't talk to them for 10 straight minutes. I mean it. Just tell your neighbor, paid in full.
If you got purpose, you better let it out. Yeah! Yeah! Shanda de Dio, Rebando Sakababansi Abahoya, Rinda da Bakoshaya, Tumahashando. Do me a favor, you that know it's not just on purpose, it's in purpose, that you believe my announcement prophetically that by the end of the month, no matter what was going wrong, it'll be right. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds to dance where you are, dance for my generation. Dance for yours and the generation to follow. As you do it, God said the angels shall take their posts and prepare you for victory. You got 90 seconds. One, two, one, two, three, go! And young people do this for me. My generation says y'all have too much flesh when y'all dance. I'm gonna ask you, hear your leader tonight, give me as much flesh as you can. My generation missed out on a lot of things trying to be like their parents. I'm gonna ask you for 30 seconds to be authentically you and give God the best dance you have. When you do it, God says you will be at the top of your family. You will be the most successful generation that your family's ever seen. One, two, three, go!
someone's hand. your neighbor. Y'all stop over there. Sounds like mature crybabies. Sound like you're letting all the pain out. All the regrets, all the trauma. Hold somebody's hand if there's a person whose hand is available. And we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. 
trusting. Go ahead and keep dancing. I ain't stopping you. I'm not a part of that generation. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh! Can't turn around. We've come this far. By what? By what? By what? And with faith we can move mountains. If I ever say anything that you will remember after my visit here to all of you that may have been abused by a church ministry or someone, you are still next. Look at Brother Hall, look at the prophet, look at Bishop, look at whoever. You are next. Remember that. That by the end of this month, a new you is going to surface. A you that might scare yourself. Caterpillars must become butterflies if they survive the process. You're about to get your wings. Will you tell three people I'm about to get my wings? Isaiah said it like this. They shall mount up with wings. As eagles after a long wait, they shall run and not be weary. They shall be on cruise control and walk. And not faint. To all of you in here. Wake up every day and live your life like you're next. Extraordinary. Exceptional. A threat to who's average. They hate you because you are not average. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Play something nice on piano.